Hey guys, welcome to Do More, my channel. Now my channel is all about, you know, being the best person that you can be. It's about starting your own business. It's about investing your money wisely to become, you know, wealthy as early as possible. So today I talked to this guy called Ian Young. Ian is an investment banker, but more importantly, he is a share market investor that I hold in the highest regard. And today I try and get into his mind in terms of how the market works. I try and get him to explain his tips and techniques as to how to buy a stock wisely, as to how to sell a stock wisely, and hopefully some of that magic dust will rub off on this interview. If you like this episode, tell me what you think, comment on it, share it, like it, tell all your friends about it, and stay tuned for future episodes. <laughs> Okay, man, Ian Young, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. Good I afternoon, John. <laughs> you know, I'm here finally. I made it. <laughs> I know yeah, you the from big time. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, before we start, um, I think we normally have a Glen Levitt, right? But you brought a nice, lovely Yamazaki. Yes. Um, this I... is pretty rare. Okay, this is a foreign investment. When Yamazaki won the World Whiskey Award in 2014, I realized that there will be a huge demand for all sorts of Yamazakis. This is not the, well, of course, not the winner, but it's a relative. So I bought like uh, 30, 40 uh, bottles or something. But this particular one is of Derek Tiong, okay? Derek Tiong, who is a very smart guy. He's a good, good friend of my son, Nicholas. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. You, you saw the trend, you, you got I in, saw the trend. you committed to I it. I committed, I bought. So recently, Teeling won the World Whiskey Award. Everyone can do this, for those who can in, invest in alcohol. <laughs> Buy, I bought all the Teelings, you know. In time to come, uh, there'll be shortage of uh, whiskeys, especially those vintage. The aged whiskeys, yeah, right? Aged whiskeys, yes. There's a limited. I mean, imagine a 23 year old whiskey. I mean, you can't. Can't find it. Can't I say, hey, I'm going to produce more in the factory tomorrow. You can't do that in this in the distillery, you know. Yeah. I had this discussion with Teng Chiwai actually, um, Afin Huang. Yes. And he, one of the things that he also said was, um, whiskeys could be. I mean, the, the thing is, there's no, no, there's not that many aged whiskeys in the future. They're going to stop. They've been, they're being phased out already. And they'll just be, you know, non-aged, uh, non-age defined whiskies. So I, I guess if, if you are capable and you've got a place to store it, you should, right? Just buy, just yeah. buy. It's like a good stock. Yeah. So just clear all. The <laughs> <laughs> just, just clear, clear so the decks and commit just all the. Clear. Yeah. Exactly, like the tealing you can get for three hundred ringgit and still, still. Of course, not the world whiskey award the winner. Button. The world yeah. whiskey award, I, which I do. My yeah. son flew to. Dublin to buy it for me. Oh. Okay, yeah, he did. But he's based in London, so okay. Okay, so okay. So he flew, he got, it's about 1,004 ringgit. Okay, per yeah. per bottle. Per bottle. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's going to fly as well. Yeah, but it's cheaper than this. This is a few thousand. Yeah. <laughs> this is 3,000 already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell, man? Yeah, yeah. It is. Well, thank yeah. you. Um, so I, I know you from, from, from Investment Bank, right? Mm -hmm. I see you as a deal maker. I see you as someone who knows about the share markets. I see you as someone who has a pulse on the, um, the trends. And how to make money, I think, specifically is how you make money. So that's the essence of why we're discussing today. Yes. Um, yes. But let's, let's, let's start at the start, right? Your years in the bank, your years in, in merchant banking. What were the things that you learned from there and what were your most formative lessons? Okay. When I started life, I wanted to be a social worker. Okay. A social worker? Social worker. You wouldn't believe it. But NGO, somehow, kind of like charity yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. So Peter and I, a good friend in Srum, but so we used to go around doing a lot of church work and all that. I mean, you won't believe it, okay? Yeah, no we kidding. used to do that. I, yes. Ian Young. I did. High net worth individual. Yes. <laughs> I, I still do it. In fact, yeah, yeah. I still give a lot to, yeah. to worthy causes, okay? okay? But I'm not ATM for all anyone, <laughs> which happens. So anyway, that's a, let's not talk about that. So in any case, I think integrity is important. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people want to deal with honest people. Yeah. So if, and I realized that when I first went into equities, okay, and I thought, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to die because I'm not like these guys, you know, like they're flashy, they're glib, they can talk. And, and seriously, I'm an introvert. Yeah, I mean, that's a reality, yeah. Chuang, yeah. you know. So I, will, I want to go into research in SJ in those days, okay, SJ Securities. 
And City Norizam, you know, thank, I must thank City very much because she, she gave me a big break. She said, sorry, we really got a hair we we all the analysts we wanted, we we're going to put you in sales. I tell you, I nearly died, you know, I said, sales, <laughs> you know, that's nuts, I mean. So I for those know, who don't know sales, what do salespeople do? They sell stocks, they sell stocks. They, they sell stocks. In those, in the 80s and 90s, they were like, uh, when we started, it was like interbroke. You know, so he's did all the brokers, the foreign brokers and all that. And let's say Chuang, you're based in Singapore, Hong Kong. So I'll go and approach you, be very chummy with you, and you give me Malaysia in those days was the place to invest, you know, in the early nineties as well. She So the bull run, right? Up until nineteen. Yeah, the bull run, yeah. Yeah. And and I think it's Barton Biggs, if I recall, who said He's a huge guy. Martin, Martin yeah, yeah, that, 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 uh, Morgan Stanley yeah. uh, uh, strategies, and somehow it was a confluence of a lot of factors. And Malaysia was one of the the, the markets to invest in. Okay, so and I was there, so and I didn't know what to do, you know, because I was such an introvert. So I said, so I got my big break from Singapore, and, and that's it, you know, yeah. So, um, what are the rules of, of uh, sales trading, right? How do you, how do you um, sell ideas? How do you spot ideas? How do you peddle stocks which maybe fundamentally are not that sound, but they are sexy? Which is the essence of stock markets, right? Because stock markets are all about just three emotions, well, two emotions, right? Greed and fear. You want to trigger greed so that people can buy those stocks, right? You want to stay away from fear. So how do you sell a stock? How do you sell a stock idea and, and uh, trigger that greed in them? I wouldn't say trigger the greed. I mean, I, I'm very different. Seriously, I mean... Yeah. So how does an introverted social worker want to be? Yeah. I would become say, a sales hey, you know, there's a truth. I think there's, a, there's something very interesting. Yeah. There's good earnings growth. Yeah. It's undervalued. And it's trading at uh, very attractive valuations. I think growth is what everyone looks for. Yeah. You know, yeah growth in earnings especially so in those days you look at the Sunway group perhaps you look at Gold One Watts those were the, the leader cables in those days and then God forbid Aocom you know yeah so so these were the stocks mm. so what did you learn in those days Ian? I mean you saw the whole bull run of 1993 I mean so many people made so much money and they lost and they lost and I would say 90, 95% of because the they stayed in because they were greedy they, they stayed in yeah. you know Okay, I must confess, so, I didn't make anything. I mean, zilch. And yet I saw uh, friends and colleagues who, who, who borrowed money from the ATM, you know, using the bank using ATM, uh, credit cards. And with a nest egg of uh, 40, 50,000, they could make two, three million. I was, it's crazy. I was surprised. You know, yeah. So what did you learn from the um, crash, the, the, burn, the crash and burn of 1993? So I was uh, very disciplined, or perhaps I was very ignorant, in a, uh, very uh, fearful, okay, fearful. Because yeah. I, I used to read a lot, you see, Peter Lynch, Ron Buffett, you know, the, 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 those. And, and you would know that John Train, where he would uh, compile all those top investors and all that. And... Uh, don't be greedy, okay? Do you do a lot of reading? It's very important. Yeah. So a lot of people bought on a whim and a fancy, right? Exactly. Maybe their friends said, "Oh, go and buy ABC or so go and buy So let's say you are the guy in Hong Kong. You are the broker. He's always looking for ideas, and we in Malaysia so will push be feeding ideas. him. Yeah. We push ideas. So obviously, uh, that uh, I would put on my salesman cap at times. I have to. I can't be say, "Don't buy." It'll come, don't buy, you know. Yeah. But they do appreciate it. But and being interbro uh doing business, I say, okay, just buy me five million TRI uh, situation. TRI, like TRI yes. Yeah, Bloody which hell, is, man. Uh, uh, but now become Ramli. Aziata now. Yeah. 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 South Aziata. Yeah. Mm. Dodger and Ramley. Mm. So what'd you learn? Um, you got to yeah, you know, look, at the, look at the numbers. Look at the fundamentalist. Yes, be a fundamentalist. When I left in CIMB, okay, the investment bank, in 2013, uh, I wanted to list my own company, you know, which was a spec, and I thought, hey, 
But more importantly, I wanted to invest my own money in the sense that because I, I had a lot of great ideas, you see, and a lot of our clients were making so much money, millions, you know. So I said, I better eat my own cooking, man, seriously. Yeah. So when I started investing big time, I would say the going has been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, the market is this, this, this animal, right? Some people, yes. many people, in fact, most people underestimate the market. They think that they are sometimes bigger than the market. They think they can read the market. They think they can tell where it's going to go. But it's almost, it's, it's virtually impossible. Nobody's bigger than the market. No, not, not even Warren Buffett, right? What is the essence behind what makes the market operate? What is the secret sauce behind making money from the share market? Making money from share market is taking long term view. That's that's my my. I'm uh, in my time in investment. I met a lot of individuals, not not many. Okay, let's say about ten to fifteen, and these people they're worth hundreds of millions, you know. And they started very little, something like ten thousand, twenty thousand ringgit. I met one engineer, former engineer. In 1967, he started investing. He told me his return is 36%. Every year? Every year. Since the 60s? Since the 60s. And he told me that about 10 years ago. You know? So I worked it out. Gosh, he's worth about 300 million 10 years ago. And, I'm, I, and I know he's still getting winners. Yeah. He could be a billionaire by now. Yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. And, and that's the way to do it. Mm. So what take does it mean to take view. a long-term view? What does it mean? Buy, you're buying a business. You're not buying a piece of paper, you see. You okay, know? so you it's take a position. A take a position. A uh, for example, I know people bought QL, people bought Press Metal, Hatta Lega. One individual I know bought Hatta Lega two months after it was listed. If you recall, Hatta Lega, the IPO price was 185. He bought 160, he bought a million shares. And now that one million shares is worth about three hundred over million ringgit. Fucking hell, man! <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh my it's god! True. I, I've been to the public bank AGMs, and the first slide they love to show is that if you had bought one thousand shares of public bank in nineteen sixty-five or whatever, when the stock listed at you know, one ringgit thirty-five cents or whatever, um, plus everything, plus dividends, plus bonus issues, you would be worth that one thousand two hundred eighty ringgit would be worth. 1.8 on 1.9 or 2 billion ring a uh, 2 million ringgit by now it's true okay uh, my good friend Mr. Gan Tiam Chai the exec- executive chairman of Kawan Food he said when he started his business in 1978 okay uh, well, his friend bought I think 40,000 shares of public bank and Mr. Gan told me this I think about 5 years ago so his friend now every year gets two to three million in dividends. Bloody hell, man! Yes. So, so, so the thing is, you got to spot the right stock. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You got to be able to buy a good quality stock at a certain price, which is below market value at best, and then you got to have the patience and the discipline to ride out the market. To ride it out. Right? There'll be a lot of bad news. Oh, you a know, lot of bad news that, and cycles, is, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Explain that 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 emotion. You could be very logically driven, you know. So in other words, uh, you got to put your emotion aside. You got to be very disciplined. So in other words, you're going to hear a lot of people. Hey, you got to sell. You got to sell. Hey, you're always sitting on a lot of profit, you know. So so, especially your friends, you know. So, uh, you have to uh, look at it yourself and say, hey, uh, let's say for example, I know someone bought uh, QL fifteen years ago. And he sold recently because we have 45 times earnings. It's like ridiculous. It's crazy. It's crazy because yeah. people are now buying QL of, because of Family Mart, you see. You know? So, and they, they think that uh, it's a good share. Yeah. Uh, I know Dr. Chia personally yeah. is a fantastic manager. Invest in the person, okay? That's very important. You can get some of Dae Hong Piao. You can get someone like uh, Chia Song Kun, you know? Uh, How do you know to spot a good manager? When you look at Chia Sung Kun in the eye, or when you look at Tae Hong Piao in the eye, and how they move and react with their people, what do you look for to tell you that it's, he's a good manager, a good custodian of the business? 
Yeah, good uh, steward of the business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got to be frugal, and he doesn't need to. If you look at the the the, uh, for me, if you put a dollar in the business, it's got to come up with attractive. Let's say at least a twenty cents return per yeah, annum. Yeah. So giving away some of the secrets, twenty percent. So it has to the returns have to be quite. Attractive. Yeah. That that's how we judge a business. Yeah. So to me, it's more important than people say PR is low and all that. You know, PR is like can be low for a long time. You know, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah because the business is not expanding. You know, so it has to be very scalable. Yeah. So look, QL now, they're like the the market. When I first met Dr. Chia, remember in in uh, BJ. The market cap, I think, was at three hundred million. Now, the market recently I saw is about ten billion. You know, that's thirty times. Is it? Yeah. Th- thirty times. Yeah. yeah, thirty times. But it's not as good, of course, as the Hatalega. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you tell someone's a good, good, good uh, manager? Good manager, good business. Uh, how do you tell though? Because you can easily get get stung. I mean, remember Transmile, right? Transmile, yes. everybody remembers, right? For example, who would, have thought, who would have thought Enron would go down, right? Who would have thought Olympus would be dodgy, right? Who would have thought? Do you know what I mean? But I think after somebody look at him in the eye, you can... Can you tell, really? I, I, I think I can, you know, I think I can, you know? Yeah. And you can, and the lifestyle, you know, definitely the people who are uh, not, uh, who are dodgy, have a very high flying type of uh, luxurious lifestyle, you know. You can you can say that. Yeah. But I remember having lunch. Okay, Doctor Chia, I'm going to say this. In Klang with Doctor Chia, and he was haggling with a guy over the cost of the meal, which cost like twenty ringgit. These are the managers you like because they're watching like, the cost. They're watching the cost, you know. I mean, I was thinking to myself, hey. It's like five bucks or, you know, but yeah. he wants to do what is right, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm. That, that sort of thing. So there's two parts of um, investing, right? One is knowing when to go into a stock and when to leave the stock, when to sell the stock, right? So the first, some people get it right going in, but some people get it completely wrong going out and they lose all their gains, right? And some people have this beautiful dance. They get in at the right time and they get out at the right time. So let's talk about the getting in part, right? For someone who is not an accountant or like a, like a learned investor, how does one spot a good stock? Well, what are the principles of buying wisely? To me, like I said, the return is very important that, that one can get. You know, you're going to put in one ringgit, or one dollar, hopefully you can get at least 20 cents per, per annum. So in other words, the cash flow. So profits are one thing. And but I think the returns are more important to me, and more equally important scalability. No point having a fantastic business, but it will remain the the, the small business at, that it is. Look at rubber gloves. Yeah. You just put a, like like twenty factories, and you can become the biggest in the world. You know. Are you an investor mainly in Malaysia now, or you invest around the world? I focus mainly in Malaysia and Southeast Asia. Okay. Okay. Yeah and also China. But I still like to stick to what uh, Mr. Bartford says, uh, stick to your circle of competence. So, and I find there's a tremendous value here because we're the worst performing market. That's a good news. Yeah. Uh, Malaysia's so there's a lot of cheap market. stocks out there. Oh, a lot of cheap stocks. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of cheap stocks. So, okay, so to the novice investor or to the beginner investor, how does one read the news? How does one read the announcements? How does one read the financial reports and the announcements um, to get a good sense of where a stock is going and its health? Are there principles behind that? Okay. In other words, the gearing level has to be... The debt level. The debt. So, so that's the first thing you look at. Debt vis-a-vis the shareholders' funds, equity. So in other words, it mustn't be too highly geared, you know, so unless, of course, you're building like, like press metal. When they built the, the aluminum uh, smelter business in Strava, yeah. that was the best deal ever, man. You know, <laughs> they borrowed like, what, one billion and they, and now the com- press metal is worth 25 billion. When you 
Tan Sri Paul couldn't. We were drinking about 15 years ago. His company was worth the market cap was what 400 million. Yeah. So you've got to borrow the right business for the right reasons, and you know. But in any case, I try to make sure. In generally, these companies are highly geared. Okay. Okay. Other than debt levels, what do you look at? What do you look at? Uh, scalability. So, like I told you, I, I don't in a situation where it's a fantastic business, but always remain like uh, one one shop lot type of business. You know. So I was thinking, you know, Penang, and I was thinking, you know, that guy in Penang Street, the Penang Chendol and all that. The Chendol guy, yeah. yeah. It's a fantastic, fantastic business. But he can only be one. No, it's still scalable. You find everywhere now the outlets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's very scalable. The Ron Buffer says it has to have the brand equity, the franchise, you know. Yeah. The franchise is very important. In other words, it can't be a business where everyone can duplicate, you know. Or else you won't have any competitive advantage. Yeah. You need to have a, the, the moat, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, the defensibility. Mm. Okay, so now uh, you pointed out quite rightly that Malaysia is the cheapest market, no, not the cheapest, it is the most uh, unloved market in Asia. Okay, for a variety of reasons, which which, we'll, which we shall not get into. Okay, yeah. um, there's a lot of deals available, so that's a, it's a good time. In fact, if you're an investor, you're spot for choice. You don't know which to buy, and for most people, ninety nine point nine percent of them, their ammunition is limited. Right, they can only buy a few stocks. What does one look for? Look for low valuations. Once again, stick to your principles: scalability. Okay, I hate to use this term, low PR, and you know. Because low, low P's are like, uh, but it'd be better to have low P's and buy something like 50 times earnings, you know. Yeah. Okay, okay, look at Amazon and all, perhaps it's trading about like 200 times earnings or something, you know. Yeah. But then again, I still prefer uh, a lot of the companies in Malaysia, especially the small cap space. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So that's where all the, the, the values are. Yeah, because if you buy something for 30 million, it's a higher chance of it going to 30 million rather than buy There's something which is still very good chance for it to go up to 1B yeah or 1B and, right and, and, and you know you and, and I will be driving Ferraris then you know well you are you're driving Ferrari I'm not <laughs> no, 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 no I'm not I'm not seriously yeah. um, mm. so what sectors do you like uh, what, what kind of like, I, what, I don't what I usually look at the top down approach like okay let's for example today when I'm meeting I met this company called Kajutran Asastara Berhad they're into M and E, okay, engineering, Me- mechanical and engine and electrical. So they do things like okay, all these uh, wiring and all that and lips. But they're trading about uh, eight times earnings, net cash position. Fantastic. Net cash. Uh, uh, market price is uh, what's the market price? Uh, Twenty five cents. Yeah, they have three cents in cash. You know. So, you know, that when a company is ca- has uh, decent cash, it will never go bust, you know. Mm. Unless the um, owner is, or unless the, the you know, there's the, the some fraud in there, yeah, 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 which is obviously, yeah. 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 So there's a lot of these very cheap stocks in Malaysia. In fact, the whole, the whole region, right? They're what are known as value traps. Because they stay that way forever, maybe intentionally even by the controlling shareholder, maybe the family, right? Maybe they want to keep it cheap. So how do you get away from those stocks? I agree with you. They are value traps. Uh, in fact, I won't go into names because we, we do a lot of corporate finance of deals and all that. And actually, a lot of uh, uh, tycoons have actually approached and say, hey, don't you go to the guy approach him, yeah. I want to buy over the company. Yeah. So I actually approach these value traps. Yeah, yeah. Say, hey, you know, your company is worth, has a market cap of 1.2 billion yeah. and has about 600 million in cash. And we've got in Johor land worth about 4 billion or something. Do you want to sell to me? Is are you crazy? I'm not going to sell to you because my company is worth like, uh, the market, let's say the market price is 470 now. I'm giving a lot away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's say we're willing to buy it at seven ringgit, okay? But he knows it's worth 20 ringgit. Like I say, it's a value trap. But it will, the share price will never move to 20 ringgit. Why does he keep it there? Uh, okay, there are a variety of reasons. My, my guess is that because 
It's owned by a family. Okay. They don't need to see it fly. So, right? so they don't need to see it fly, and perhaps it provides gainful employment. I'm speaking generally, not 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 for this. They don't want to to to. They want status quo. They're very happy with the one two million that they get per annum, and you tell them I can make you billionaires. They they're not keen. I mean, they they are very rich, you know, but. They don't aspire to go around that private jet or whatever. You see, and they they think that that uh, doing business together, perhaps they can keep the family together or something, until something happens. I see. Yeah. So there's a lot of like it's it's non financial reasons, right? Yeah, non financial. It's, it's, it's non-financial. kind of like a hu- almost humanitarian familial reasons. For for familial reason, not humanitarian. Yeah, yeah for, oh, for because know, of the family. Maybe and, there's you know. a social reason, right? They yeah. got staff and they don't have a, a hostile takeover, and then. You know, obviously, then half of them might get canned. You know, um, yeah, you know, because some of them get cold. Perhaps <laughs> might, might be a project. Yeah, hey, right, I can make you rich just and get rid of thirty percent of the people and chop them off. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so in 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 the process of spotting these stocks and in the process of of understanding, establishing that they're not value traps. Exactly, you are right, because value traps are such that uh, let's say in Penang, there there are a number of value traps. Uh, you yeah. know. And you don't want to invest in those companies yeah. because, they, uh, unless of course uh, they decide to wake up tomorrow and say, "Hey, you know, we will privatize the company," and most probably they will privatize it. You know, yeah, yeah, because and get everything themselves. Yeah, get everything themselves. You're right. Yeah, so unless they are going to bump up the dividend yield or something, which I don't think they will, because that 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 few hundred million has been there for for the past ten years, you see, or, or more. So, you're right. Avoid them. Yeah. Mm, avoid them. So, mm, I, I've been caught in a few value traps itself, but yeah. but uh, after like five six years, it start just start selling them off. How how important is it to make mistakes? Because I'm sure everybody you definitely will make mistakes. Yeah. You yeah. know. So, uh, what are the mistakes that you made that could have been avoided? What were the uh, circumstances? The mistakes is like knowing that. You will make mistakes. I mean, I made a lot Everybody, of mistakes. Yeah, until today, right? So you just cut it off. You, the main thing is, I think the term used by Peter Lynch is, you know, uh, do not... Uh, it's like you own a fleet of uh, horses, you know. So don't take profit on those that you are the winners. Uh, and then hold on to the losers, you see. That's the dumbest strategy ever. Yeah. So in that, you can get a bunch of... Horses that can't run, is it? You know. Yeah. yeah. So it's are like, you are you one of those people that as soon as you win a bit of money, you you get out and then you no, book it, no. right? No, no. I'll ride it. I'll ride, ride it, it all yeah. the way. I'll ride all the way. Yeah. Okay. So I have winners that are still producing like what in a short space of time, 150, 200 percent returns. And uh, just hold on to it. Yeah. So mm. how disciplined? Unless are you? it happens to be in a very cyclical type of business, like oil and gas, for example. Yeah. For let's say those who bought. Uh, 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 Sapporo Energy yeah. at, at one ringgit in those days and went up to four and at a peak you know when 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 uh, Tan Sri Mokzani sold that, that was uh, alarm bells alarm bell you know yeah, yeah. so when the major shareholder <laughs> one of them <laughs> sells out it's hey I you think follow, you, you, you got to follow it was man. the wisest thing he did it was the wisest thing he did and I think that's the wisest thing I did <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's 30 cents now 29 yet. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like that. That's crazy, yes. So again, how do you spot those things? How do you have the discipline? How do you... you got to be very in touch with the market. Like for me, I'll, I'll spend like two, three hours every day reading up on on stocks, you know. It's something I love, you know. It's... it's uh, you sorry, got to want to love it, talk. right? you got to love it. you got to love it, yeah. You have to... You must have the interest, you know. Yeah, you must read... Not only on stocks, read, read on generally on business. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So because trends are like uh, that. Something that happened in US, it could happen here in six months' time. So when 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 let's say tech is booming there, it could happen. In, it, normally, it's a worldwide phenomenon. You see. So what is happening in the market now? What's your read of the market? I generally try to ignore the market, so I'll look at the. Like because I'm taking a long-term view. If I take, let's say, public bank, for example, like it's, what do you rightly say? Public bank was, uh, there's so many things that have happened. Yeah. I don't have a damn of a market. 
Make sure, make sure I've got the public bank is here, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so a lot of people are now saying that long-term investing is dead, right? There's no more proposition to buying a stock and keeping for the long term because there just isn't, I, right? I do agree. They're, they're long-term, like I told you just now, uh, I bought a, a rights shares yeah. uh, two weeks ago yeah. at five, five and a half cents. And the day, and the next day, it went up to 10 cents. I just sold it, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, of course, I had to sell because of the last day of trading, see, you know, yeah. so I have no choice. So for me, I've got the trading element, I've got long term. So the trading element would be I keep about 10% of it, you know, just to, to perhaps a gambler in me. You know? Yeah, yeah. But 90% would be mainly two, three year type portfolio. And do you still, even, to, even today, when everybody's talking about a recession, everybody's talking about, you know, oh, it's the 10th, 11th year anniversary of the financial crisis. People are holding cash okay. and moving I to recall gold. I recall three years ago, everyone was predicting the crash. So imagine those three years ago, the fund managers actually went down to zero, or perhaps they they were they, they sold even puts or something. For yeah, example, yeah, 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 that's right. They be dead by now, you know, really. Yeah. So they're out of business. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, yeah. So, to me. Look at the business. Forget about the economy and, and perhaps okay, the currency may be important, okay, because it affects the business, you see, okay. But in terms of global economy, I'm not that bothered really. Like Peter Lynch says, if you if you read up about the macroeconomics for, for for five minutes every day, you spend like uh, three minutes too much on it, you see. You know? yeah. yeah. So is it is it at all possible for like a very good company, which has very strong fundamentals, to ever go down like to like rock bottom status? Is that possible? It is possible. It is possible, uh, right? It it's, is it's possible, a, but unlikely, you know. Unlikely, unlikely yeah. Okay. I, I really can't think of any very good business. Okay, one caveat though. Yeah. My biggest fear, okay, I'm telling you guys, okay. uh, my biggest fear is technology, you know. I may have the best managed bookshop 10 years ago, chain bookshops, Barnes & Noble, or whatever, disruption. That really scares me. So when I invest in, in any business, I call it business now, I got to look at the technology factor because my fear is it could be... Put our business like technology one, two years' time, you see, you know. Yeah. yeah. But you see, the thing is, Ian, not ev- everything potentially is, is, is disruptable by technology. I mean, who would have thought that doctors could be disrupted? Who would have thought that lawyers can be disrupted, right? To, I mean, today, journalists, like, the machines are, are, are replacing journalists. See, the, the media has been, the print media has been wiped out. Wiped out? Know, really, yeah. So how do you, how do you, how do you forecast disruption? You can't. I can't. But when that happens, you know, there's a, a paradigm shift in the whole industry. Yeah. Sadly, you've got to get out, you know. I mean, you're not going to hold your star or, or your media prima until it goes down to... Mm. Yeah, so, okay, I'm, I don't know how, how candid you're going to be, but um, what represent good deals now? Whether in terms of names or whether in terms of sectors, or whether in terms of business industries? I still like the few F&B companies, you know, so, uh, where I think they uh, F&B, but non-restaurant-like uh, business, you know, because after uh, reading now about cloud kitchens and all that, you know, that's going to be a killer for, for all the, the yeah, outlets, outlets right? and all that, you know. Yeah, true. So F and B, obviously F and B is interesting because and there's so the, many people the in Asia. Product, yeah, yeah. The, the, where they manufacture uh, uh, branded products, you know, branded F and B products. Okay, so mm. you stay old school that way. Yeah, I, I was very keen on Nestle when it was uh, forty ringgit. I tried to buy some about last year, then it shot up to what was the price of what thirty hundred forty eight. Unfortunately, I didn't to buy only four thousand shares, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I wanted to buy everything because I realized that the yield was there. Return equity is about seventy five percent for Nestle. You know, you put in a ringgit and get seventy five cents every year. What a business can! Yeah, it's a incredible. fantastic business. Incredible. Yes, incredible. And it's recession proof by and large. By and large, it is because people is. will still buy Maggi Me and Milo and Nescafe, right? Exactly. Right? I love the below. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's the buying part of the equation. Yeah. What about selling? 
How do you know when to sell? Selling is like, like QL, you know. When you see it for the, I entered the AGM. So when I heard that uh, all the shareholders that were euphoric about Family Mark, and when I heard that Family Mark's contribution might take one, two years to, to, to come in, I thought, hey, you know, it's a good time to get out. Mm. So when it's really overvalued, let's say public bank goes to, to 40 times earnings or something, I would get out, yes. It'd be ridiculous not to. Yeah, but then how would you explain something like Amazon, right? Amazon has been at eye-watering valuations for the longest time. Even today, it's trading at, what, 200 times earnings? And it's, it's touched the trillion dollars a few times already in terms of market value. It, it doesn't fulfill my investment. Uh, doesn't tick all the boxes for me. I, I wouldn't invest in Amazon. I, I, I lost out, yes, I didn't invest. But I wouldn't because it's very conceptual to me. Okay, I like to see, still like to see the cash flow and the earnings come through, you know. So, so yeah, it's tough. To, to me, it's a greater fool uh, theory. It's a greater fool theory, yeah, right? Greater, yeah, I know my greater fool theory. Make sure I'm the first or second fool, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not the last guy holding the, the baby, guy, right? you know, yeah. In time, the company realized that, hey, you know, Amazon can't grow anymore, and that's it, we've got to get out, you know. Yeah. Mm. So conceptually, yes, those are the perhaps the, the venture cap guys who went in. Those were great. Those are great investment. Yeah. yeah. So how would you con- how how would you interpret this current um, environment? This current uh, the mood. Um, you know where markets are. You know how much of a buying opportunity is it now? A lot of buying opportunities. It is right. Yes. Look at the small mid cap stocks. You know. Uh, they, are they, you, are you seriously here. buying already? Have you been previously buying? I, I've been buying for, and I've been holding on to it, and just sitting on them, you know, seriously, yeah. Mm. How? How? Hey, cheers, come. Hey, hey, cheers. No, no, because this is very interesting, right? Yeah. At, a, at a time when a lot of people are like saying, "Hey, get out of equities, move into cash," and some people are buying gold, uh, and, and you're buying more stocks. It's I'm sitting it, on the stocks, okay? okay. So I'm sitting it, on stocks. Is it a time frame uh, thing for you? It's not time frame, it's just that if I feel that uh, if, if, let's say for example, Kosan rubber, uh, which I had, and I sold out, I think during the last when it was, went berserk, and of course I sold out, but the, the idea is I should have gone back in, which I didn't, you see, you know? Okay. When, uh, I think three years ago, when, 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 when the rubber glove sector boomed, you know, the, the share price went up on a berserk. Okay. Yeah. So I know and then you it tank after that. So I know you you mentor young people, Ian. Um, yes. so I'm gonna get you to summarize these things for us, right? Mm-hmm. What are the three things that the novice investor should be aware of and watch out for when he's buying a stock? And what are the three things that the novice investor should do when selling a stock? Okay. Three things. Buying. Buying, I would say that buy something where you're familiar with, okay, number one. And number two, it has to be scalable. No point, like I said, no point buying something which will still remain, uh, well, might be the most fantastic restaurant ever, but it will always be one restaurant. Yeah. yeah, only one chef, right? Yeah, one chef. Yeah. It has to be scalable, okay, that's very important. And thirdly, someone you can trust, okay. So you can see that more or less, uh, even you do your own reading, you can see, okay, these guys, the numbers are uh, net cash. You, you can't, well, forget that China come, the, 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 what they call, the M chips, uh, you know. The, the. But generally, you can see the, the cash, and it was net cash, let's say about 5-10% net cash. I, I think that's fantastic, yeah. Okay. Not too much cash, though. Because Not too much, too much cash, cash should yeah. be ridiculous, you know. I mean, you should be giving it out as a dividend. You can't yeah. be sitting on, when the market cap is 1B and then sitting on half a billion in cash is ridiculous. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the mm. principles of selling then? What are the three things that you should be aware of? Okay, when everyone's euphoric, perhaps you want to sell. When, when, when let's say the guy in the lift, you not, okay, for me, I get a lift. And th- there have been times I sold. And then when I talking about the stock market, they say, they say okay. This is a, this is a good time to perhaps take some off the table. Okay, know? so yeah. go against the grain. Where oh, definitely. Yeah. You can't be 
uh, you can't be outstanding when following everyone. You see, you know, if you are following the crowd, you never be rich. Yeah,、mm, you have to be different. Principle number two. Principle number two.、Uh, Buy something which、uh, I would say, like I said, return equity very important. You、yeah. know, return something which about at least fifteen percent, twenty percent return equity.、Mm, yeah, so for every dollar yeah, you put in, yeah, you're getting fifteen twenty cents back 15, every year, year in year out. Every year, yeah. Most importantly, actually, in life, to me, then be disciplined. You may know everything in life. But if you're not disciplined, you're not going to execute it. See,、yeah. you know, John.、Yeah. You know, what's the point? I might be the smartest guy in the world, but I've no discipline, and I'm going to go berserk when I'm going to be very affected by what people tell me. You know, and and all my friends say, hey, you can buy this house, or you better sell. You know, so discipline to me is very important. Yes, extremely. All these things are quite human emotions, right? Yeah,、um, you've got to take the emotional part away. Yeah. And for the most part, when I look at someone like you who has been investing his whole life, and you probably, I, I, I think you're probably going to be doing this for the next fifty years, right? You probably do it until the day you like. I'll be dead. Yeah. By the time I die, I'll be <laughs> shuffle all the smalls of coal. You can still be analyzing annual reports, right?、Um, yeah. Drucker Miller is the same thing. Warren Buffett is the same thing. Charlie Munger is the same thing.、Um, you know, these guys、it. are still analyzing、yeah. annual reports at ninety years and, old. And actually, money to me doesn't mean anything. Okay,、know? so what drives you、yeah. to do this? It's like. It's a hobby. It's an interest. It's the passion of my life, you know. So, I、yeah. tell everyone I would do it for free. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I would do it for free. So I want to ask you about this guy, right? Kun Yuyin. Okay, Kun Yuyin is the so-called super investor. He started. I know Mister Kun. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so do I. So yeah. he started Mudajaya. He started IJM. He started、um, one more construction company. Mudajaya. Mudajaya.、Uh, IJM, right? And one more.、Um, he, apparently, according to him, he only started investing it when he was fifty-five years old. He only started investing seriously at fifty-five years old, and now he is what eighty-nine, eighty-eight years old, thirty-something years into the game, right? How important is it to get a lot of years under your belt, get the feel of the market, and understand how this bloody animal works? Okay, important. Start young in anything. Start young. Make all your mistakes when you're young, because you can't afford to make mistakes when you're fifty years old. Yeah,、old. you can't lose you your、know? capital. Yeah, when I started, I lost everything. But it was like what three thousand ringgit, so, so I'm I'm still here and yeah, you're still standing. Uh, uh, yeah, still standing. I'm very happy and comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's fine to lose. It's fine to make mistakes. Failure is in is an event, not a person. You see, so, so, but do a lot of studying. I think,、uh, if I have any thing, to,、uh, any book to recommend, one hour on Wall Street. One up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. To me, that is the book to read. Yeah. Okay. So your three things to read. To read is one thing, but I said the most important thing is discipline. And okay, discipline. Okay. Okay. Seriously. Okay. So because it happens to me at times, you know, certain things that doesn't、uh, doesn't fulfill all my conditions, and let's say, and yet I've jumped in, you know, because、yeah. it's like. I can't explain it. I'm I'm human, you see,、yeah. and and it's a mistake, you know. Yeah. yeah. So how to explain it? I, I, I said I, discipline I, is very yeah, important. Yeah, I'm just flashing back to all those mistakes I made as well. Yeah. So <laughs> all driven by yeah, just pure you, you emotion. Yeah. You may. I may. I think Rob Buffett makes it.、Uh, sorry, I quote Buffett all the time. I read so much about him.、Yeah. You know, everyone knows how to lose weight. They say, you know,、yeah. seriously, but. It's like whether you're disciplined enough to lose, to to follow that that regime, you know, that is the equally important, you know. So when you wake up in the morning, and in the course of your reading habits, right, what are the what are the three things you read? Top three things. Top I look、four. at market developments. I and so you read the business pages. Yeah, read business pages. I'm reading all the time. Even in bed, I read about Wall Street and I look look up the Bloomberg and and. Yeah. yeah, so it's like for for me, it's a、uh, it's three to four hours, you know.、Just、trying to get a holistic three sixty view of the market, trying to get a read on where it's going to go. Not as well. I'm not bothered where it's going to go. Well,、yeah. of course, I don't want it to crash. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, but but、uh, I like to. It's an interest. Is、yeah. I'm not buying based on what the economy is going to go. I'm buying because 
is a fantastic company run by a very honest, capable guy, you know. That is uh, supremely important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scalable business. Scalable business. Way. At a low price, good manager, Decent honest manager, guy. Manager. Decent guy. Yeah. Okay. So all until now, we've been talking, Ian, about buying shares on the public markets, right? Publicly traded stocks, right? That's one... Sh- well, that's one proven way of getting rich, okay? Um, you've also talked about starting a business. So that's the other way you can get rich, right? Yes, um, to all young people. Yeah. If you can, try and you... And of course, they want to do it. Do it, you know? Don't think so much, oh, is it the right time? I don't have the capital. I'm not ready. I would say do it. Because to me... Uh, I mean, I've been in a banking line as well, investment all the for So I realized that capital is actually secondary. The idea and the determination is more important. If anyone has a good idea, I'll invest in it. So don't worry, capital, you know. Yeah, really. but yeah. actually, we're looking for twenty five percent ROE, and uh, <laughs> and, and complete utter unwavering honesty from the guy, right? I mean, decent, and you decent know, he's the, the, he can't be angel, that's for sure, you yeah, know. But yeah. but uh, just uh, uh, someone who will pull a fast one on the shareholders. Yeah. So, in your opinion, what what businesses would would be good to start in this current environment? Services, low uh, asset like type of businesses. Services know? like what? Services like, uh, oh, start a business. If, if I'm going to start a business. Yeah. Eh? Or if, it's, if a young uh, person is starting a business. I will go to tech. I will go to tech. Yeah, yeah. I'll still go yeah. to tech. Yeah. 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 What, what area? Because tech is to, huge. to me, is tech is huge. A- any area in tech. Because it's like, to me, Malaysia is still the one of the best places for, for tech. You know, I mean, must be crazy to go and start a business in, in Singapore or Hong Kong where it's like yeah. so expensive, you know. Yeah. Over here, I can get a, a, a coder. Recently, I met, uh, I visited this company in uh, in uh, Taman Tun, Common Ground. Yeah. He, he tells me he can get a very capable guy who writes excellent co- uh, code for 15,000 ringgit. In Singapore, pay about twenty thousand sing for that. You yeah, know, sixty thousand so ringgit. Yeah, that's four times the price. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and I don't understand why people don't do it here. You don't need to be in Silicon Valley. You can do it here. Yeah, mm. well, like, of course, there's a whole yeah. bunch of reasons, right? And after you're successful, you successful, basically, move to Singapore then right? for the cheaper tax rate. Okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Just like Grab, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Would you buy Grab? Would I buy Grab? It doesn't fulfill my, you know. I imagine I don't want the numbers. I can imagine it's very, uh, perhaps it's trading at fifty hundred times earnings. You know, yeah. so so I, I wouldn't buy that. You know. Mm. Okay, so you I know you've told me that um, you invest not because of the return, or well, you do, but you don't invest it because you're driven by the outright commercial return. You you do it because you love it, right? But. Um, as a human being, right? I love uh, the process. You love the process. So I love you, the you're process. driven by the competition, yeah. the, the, the whole yeah. activation behind it. To, right? to identify good companies to invest in. And every time you get three, four, five X, it's a real fucking thrill, right? Okay, yeah, it's a thrill, but doesn't do anything. I mean, okay, if I was like, you buy another watch or something, you know, that sort of thing, but so what, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, but more importantly, I, I can give more away, you know? That's more yeah. important, yeah. Okay, so you do, that's interesting, right? So why mm. do you give it away? How do you give it away? I don't know. I give it away. Let's say I can go to St. Joseph's and say, hey, you know, here's 10,000 ringgit and go to Crisis Home and say there's 3,000. So it all adds up. So one year can add up to 70,000, a year, yeah. for example. Yeah. Okay. I can even give it to Surau, so I, you yeah, know, too. Yeah, yeah. And it all adds up. So if you've done it over a space of 20 years, 80 to 100,000 a year. Every year. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. To, that's co- nearly it's decent. Couple of I won't say it's fantastic. I know... Mm, Mr. Kuhn has donated or wa- wanted to donate uh, the land to 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 this university in Kampa, yeah. which was worth about, what, 30, 40 million? Yeah, so I mean, he's 87 years old. I mean, what's he going to buy, right? He doesn't need he doesn't need another bungalow. He doesn't need another Rolls Royce. I mean, how many cars can he ride in anyway? He, he has a Rolls Royce. And uh, remember last time we, we went for a company visit in China? When he came back, he took the bus. Yeah, yeah that's did. pretty cool. So you actually, <laughs> yeah, cool. you actually don't need the money, right? So, so what, what drives, I mean, the... the th- it's, uh, it's a challenge, you know. It's a scoreboard. The money is a scoreboard, perhaps, you know. But 
Is yeah, yeah, I mean, there's no way I'm going to spend spend it all. No way all of us are going to spend it. You know. I, I like how you use a collective phrase as in like I'm. <laughs> I'm <laughs> no, nowhere no, no, near. No. So. I mean, all of us are going to. I seriously, I'm sure you will be. You know, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, You're a great entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do with your? You know how? What you know? What do you spend your money on? Um, how do you enjoy life? I I don't. I love watching TV. I mean, seriously. Yeah. I know it's it's crazy. <laughs> I mean. I don't like I, I don't like to fly anywhere all that much. Yeah, perhaps I need if I need to go with company business. Yeah, I fly to Sabah. You know, uh, we are, I'm helping someone do a beach resort there. That sort of thing. Yes, I could fly to KK. You know, but that's about it. You know. So you make all this money, Ian, and and you don't spend it. You you just give it away. That, that's that's some of it, not all. But it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I really don't know what 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 to. Say it already. <laughs> you, know, you caught me in the spot. I, I can't. I can't answer you, Chong. You know. Yeah. Perhaps I buy like fifty bottles of this whiskey. That yeah, 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 yeah. After winning the World Whiskey Award, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just. That's a nice cake there. Yeah. Are you? Are you an art guy? Are you a car guy? Are you like no, a watch I, guy? No, I. I. That's I, a nice yeah, watch. I. I, that, I do, but somehow it's like every time I make money. I say, hey, you know. Uh, perhaps I feel like buying the watch yeah. and there's a waiting list yeah. and normally when I go to the shop they say okay you got a three year waiting list so okay I'll wait for three years you know I'll, I'm a very patient investor or you can go right? to Italy and go and buy it nah. I mean you know. uh, Patek no Patek yeah, is Swiss okay so yeah. so uh, then somehow two months later it says hey Mr. Jung uh, your watch is here so, hey don't make wait two years so yeah. I'm surprised so let's say in Patrick in KLCC, let's say, oh, the guy, the man, the customer is on holiday. So you are very lucky. You managed to get your party in three months' time. Yeah. So, okay, fine. I mean, yeah. since it's uh, just going, so I just keep buying Patek's and all that, like <laughs> get a World Time, get the Nautilus, get the Rolex. Uh, you know, yeah, the yeah. Batman, the Pepsi, or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I noticed yeah. you're a watch guy. Uh, not really. Just that we ask me name which model is I don't know. I know it's a Nautilus. Is it a five eight six or whatever? That is. I know it's a five something. You know? Okay, so I really don't know. I'm I I'm good hit for figures and and about the stocks and all that. Like ask me about, and, uh, ratios yeah, and all exactly. that. Exactly. So I keep thinking about all these things. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but but about uh, watches. I know very little, seriously. Yeah, Just but that. but the thing is that the names you've chosen, they're very investable. You're not buying something which is just junk. You can sell it for like a multiple of what you bought for it. I I don't know. I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, does I that mean, does I that can't. answer the question? And whatever you do in life, that there's got to be something which you're buying in a certain price. No, it's not investment. Just that, uh, perhaps like you say that. Uh, there must be somewhere to spend it. Right? So yeah. Let's buy a. So principles of life, yeah. Ian. I, I guess even you know. Do good, you know. Do you good, don't, yeah. don't don't need to. You don't need to be dishonest or, or a crook to succeed. I mean, that's that is my my principle, and you know, you There's may not believe so it, but. There's so many opportunities to make money. You don't have to do yes, it. You don't have to. It's crazy. It's like it's a fantastic world we live in. I tell you, if I had to live my life all over again, I would start my business. Yeah. Although I wouldn't know what to have, what I would have done, but you would have been uh, an entrepreneur. Yeah, but I would love to do that, you know. Yeah, or, or start to become a full time investor earlier. Then I'll be worth at least a few hundred million, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when did you become a full time investor? Uh, a few years ago, then. Yeah, a few years ago. Okay, so yeah, in the, yeah, yeah. before that, you're doing it part time, and yeah, and so so then. because. Before that, I was telling people what stocks were attractive and they made a lot of money. So I thought, hey, it's time to, for me to start eating my own cooking, you know, yeah, really. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. What's your read of the next five to ten years? Is it going to be as good? I... Better. You think so? I think so. And on I think so. For Malaysia, I think... The, for Malaysia, for the ASEAN region, I think it's fantastic. Op- there are fantastic opportunities. Uh, any someone who's gone to Australia, Europe, come back, do your own thing here. You know, mm, someone young, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you know, this is the place to be. 
the ASEAN region. What would your advice be to the 31 year old guy? Start your own business. Start your own business. Start your own business. Start doing it, do it in tech. Uh, Start something in, in technology. Whatever you want. Okay, perhaps uh, I, I would say that follow your passion. That, that you know, don't do something because there's money to be made. You know, do it because you want to do it, because you love to do it. I mean, I love investing. It's not for the money. You'd be surprised. Like I told you, I, I would have done it if I were done for free. You may not believe it, but it's true. Yes, yeah, yeah. hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to believe. And and that's why I would go to the in those days, the early day. I'd go into the office on Sundays. I'd be there the whole day. Saturday, Sundays, you know, reading, yeah. analyzing, reading, analyzing. Because in those days, you didn't have uh, the the the. Couldn't, you couldn't get many things online, yeah. so most of the research materials would be in the office. Yeah. So just just to, you know, just before you go, um, at any one point in time, how many stocks do you hold? Are you are you many? Are you big guy? Big okay. universe? Okay. I small? have a lot of stocks. I love stocks. Okay. Yeah. But my major holdings would be, let's say, a few million or something. You know, that's what but we're doing. Only in a few stocks. But I might have a small positions and say, let's say, few hundred thousand worth. You know, yeah. I wish I might just sell off. You know, at a loss or something, yeah. because you. And if indeed I find it to be, I will continue to study it, okay? Let's say, for example, if I, recently I bought some oil and gas stocks, okay? Uh, a few months ago. Yeah. Then I might say, okay, I might, and then the beauty is, all stocks to me, doesn't, de- it's not dependent so much on the oil price, okay? It's actually dependent more, you're talking in Malaysian context, on petrol, under the capital earning cycle, the cycle, let's say. Because, for the past three years, or oh, Petronas has actually spent very little capex, but I realize now they've actually got to 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 restart the engine. Restart the engine, yeah, I want yeah, to put it. In, yeah. In, in, yeah, so that's why I think yeah. we're going to see. So that's a not boom dependent on prices, local. right? Yeah, as long as the oil gas oil price doesn't tank, it should be good for a lot of oil and gas companies. Okay, so you yeah. keep a few core holdings, where it's a few like core holdings where. And then some, like I said, that for the trading element, like the the the, the ORs or something, you might yeah. buy, let's say, half a million or something, and just and wake up and see it go hundred percent to run and sell and make a half a million, yeah, that sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> Big numbers there. It's not. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Okay, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, <laughs> okay. all, it's all relative, right? No, no. Sorry. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so you've always been an equities guy. Um, yeah. You're, ne- you're never currencies. You're never gold. You're never you know, uh, property. Because it's not in my circle of competence, so yeah. I I don't know much about gold. I really don't, you know. So, like, I don't know much about watches. Just that I read and say, you know, there's a Nautilus and there's yeah. a cr- cr- uh, good to buy and, yeah, yeah. you know, perhaps I should get a Porsche or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah. But generally, I don't... I don't spend that much just watching TV and other thing. <laughs> simple guy, simple taste, but good principles in life, man. I don't know. Perhaps I should be... Yeah. I used to gamble a lot, but at yeah. 28, I lost so heavily. Yeah. This is the truth. I lost so heavily. I saw to myself. I got out of that hole. I never gamble again. and never did. So in life, try not to gamble. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Biggest thief of your wealth, gambling. It is. I've seen so many people lose their uh, pants. And I almost did, and I almost did. I saw, I swore to myself, if I got out of that, that, that uh, predicament, I never gambled in, uh, as 20, when I was 28. I never, I've never done it uh, ever since, yeah. Yen Yung. Cheers. You're the Chong, man, love. Thank you. You are the man. Thank you for coming on.